26. Nick. I still wasn't sure why I'd invited her to spend the weekend with me in the Bahamas. Her face had just popped into my head when I'd seen the tickets. I didn't even need to listen to my father as he told me I should take Noah. Along, the same idea had already occurred to me. Since she'd chilled out and become easier to get along with, I'd found myself thinking about her more and more. I couldn't imagine leaving her. Alone ever since Ronnie had threatened her, and I freaked out any time I thought of some other guy getting close to her. Even remembering that she used to be with Dan put me in a bad mood. I wanted to crush him for hurting her. For hurting her and because he'd had nine months to relish her. Touch her, kiss her, God forbid, maybe even take off her clothes. The idea of Noah giving herself to someone besides me tormented me all. Night and all day. I'd never thought of myself as the jealous type, probably. Because I'd never considered any girl mine, but now it was killing me. The way she smiled, innocent, almost. She was naturally sexy, which was what I liked about her most. It didn't matter how she dressed, didn't matter. If she had on makeup, she could be a wreck, but still, every time my eyes settled on her, I imagined a thousand different ways I could make her moan. With pleasure. Maybe what had happened in the pool hadn't been exactly right, but I'd promised myself I'd stay away from her after that. She made it hard, though. I'd wanted to kill her the night before after what had happened with Ronnie, that beating had been her fault, not to mention for going out with Mario, but as soon as I'd seen the look of fear in her eyes as she'd seen my wounds, as soon as her warm fingers had touched my bare skin, I'd had to draw on all my self-control not to jump her right by the kitchen counter. Worst of all, she was getting more confident. She was less defensive, she wasn't even scared to shout at me while I was asleep. She hadn't pulled away when I'd lost control of my hands and caressed her under the water. Her legs were so long, her curves so damn sexy. And tonight she was going out again with that Morin Mario. He was always quick to feel a girl up, take her to bed if he got the chance. Same as me, but I couldn't let him do that to Noah. She was too innocent, just a kid. A kid who would drive any man with eyes wild. It especially bothered me that she was leaving on my birthday. I wanted her to myself, I wanted to show her the fun things to do in town. I wanted her view of me to change. I couldn't bear her thinking I didn't deserve to have her. Someone knocked on the door. I was still getting dressed, so I shouted for them to come in. As I buttoned the shirt I'd be wearing that night, a pair of honey-colored eyes stared at me in the mirror. Back from dinner already. I asked sarcastically, trying not to turn around and trap her, make her stay with me in my bedroom all night. You're having a birthday party, she asked, ignoring my question. I tried to feign indifference. What did you think, little sister, that I was going to stick around here? Watching a movie? You should have told me. Jenna and Lion thought I was invited. They are downstairs waiting. She crossed her arms over her black dress. It was tight and hung just four or five inches from the bottom of her ass. I was furious as I asked myself whether Mario had managed to get his hand under that dress. I don't have time for this. You want to come along? Then do it. You're on the list. But your little friend isn't, so figure it out. I walked closer to her. If I couldn't have her, at least I could smell that perfume that turned me on so much. You're looking at me like I'm a movie villain, but it's not my fault. I 
didn't know it was your birthday till a couple of hours ago. Mario had already asked me out. I couldn't just ditch him. And you think he didn't know? I asked, annoyed. I knew Mario had set the whole thing up on purpose. Surprised, angry, even a little guilty, she looked adorable. She felt bad for nearly missing a party she hadn't even known about. I couldn't help but wrap an arm around her waist and pull her close. Her eyes were skeptical but expectant. Come on, freckles, come to my birthday party, I said, pushing her hair off her shoulder and kissing her there. I smiled as I saw her goosebumps. At least I could be sure she liked me and I still had some influence over her. Or over her body, to be more precise. You want me to go, she asked as my lips climbed her neck. Did I want her to come? Obviously I wouldn't be able to touch her at that party, no one could know what was happening between us, and we couldn't kiss. It was going to be complicated. Of course I do. I didn't know what I was getting into, but it was better to have her there than not know what she was up to. She turned and kissed me on the lips, too quickly for me to enjoy it. I'll be there when dinner's over, she said. What? I shouted, much louder than necessary, holding her so she couldn't walk out. Nicholas, I'm not going to leave him hanging. I'll be a little late, that's all. Anyway, I feel like hanging out with him. His call. Cool. This girl was going to kill me. Do what you want, I said, picking my keys up off the desk and walking past her to the steps. If she wouldn't put me before an idiot like Mario, I wasn't going to let her waste my time. I was going to have fun that night, and I'd finally get her out of my head. But not even I believed that. The party was at the home of Mike, one of my friends from the neighborhood. He was a good guy, I knew him from college, and he almost always let us use his lake house when we needed to go big. Anna had taken care of the decor, including black and red helium balloons and all sorts of other stupid shit. The important stuff was in lions and the guy's hands. Alcohol, food, and more alcohol. When I walked through the door, people shouted happy birthday in unison. I greeted everyone, and five minutes later, they were all dancing, acting silly, taking off for the lake, and drinking. Anything they could get their hands on. The good thing about these parties was there were always plenty of girls. For me. I grabbed a drink and sidled up to the two dancers they'd hired for. Me. A part of me kept thinking about when Noah would get there, but. Another part said it was time to cut loose. One of the dancers, I forgot her name, wouldn't keep her hands off. Me. The other, a pretty young redhead, vanished as soon as she was done. With her number. Nobody with a Y chromosome would have been. Indifferent to the chick who kept trying to drag me off to the bathroom. But. One of my unbreakable rules was no sleeping with strippers or prostitutes or. Anyone similar, so I ditched her as politely as I could and walked to the. Back of the house. From there, I could see Tolika Lake and the reflection of the full moon in the water. My friends were all fooling around, splashing each other and dragging girls down to the shoreline. Just then, Lion came over, leaned on the wooden railing, and looked at me. I remembered the first time I'd ever seen him. He had been way bigger and scarier but at least I had been tall enough to look him in the eye before. He'd split my face open. I hadn't even known what he was pissed off about. I think I'd hooked up with his girl or something at this party I'd been taken to, but the funny thing was, thanks to my reflexes, I had been able to get away, and he'd wound up hitting the wall behind me. It had been so ridiculous, 
I'd burst into laughter while he'd clutched his. Fist in pain and started sweating. I guess he'd thought it was funny, too. Though, and we'd been best friends ever since. Thanks for inviting me on the trip, dude. I can never go anywhere with. Jenna, and finally we'll be able to get that alone time we've been needing. He was beaming. I took a sip of my beer. That trip. I couldn't think of it. Without thinking of Noah. I know she's your stepsister and all, man, but why'd you invite her, he? Asked a second later, intrigued, and I felt like he was reading my thoughts. I weighed my response before answering. I wasn't sure myself, but I just knew the idea of spending two whole days without her made me unbearably anxious. I don't want her to stay here while Ronnie's still mad about the race. He threatened her. I can't let anything happen to her. I left out the detail that if he even looked at her wrong, I'd kill him with my bare hands. Lion turned his back to the lake and looked at me sternly. I don't know what you're really about, bro, but I've seen how you look. At her. You can't hook up with her. She's your stepsister. I've been talking. With Jenna, and Nicholas, Noah isn't like other girls. You're going to scare. Her. Huh. I tried to calm down, to keep from telling him to go to hell. He wasn't wrong. Noah was different, you could see it in her eyes, in the way she was. In how she didn't even understand the effect she had on people. She was naive and innocent, and I could corrupt her so easily. I know what you mean, but nothing's up, I said, while my mind shouted back to me liar in capital letters. We're just friends. We need to B. We live together, our parents are married. It would be impossible if we hated each other, so I've decided to try to get along. Lion seemed to buy the story. You know what you're doing, he said, and then stripped off his shirt. And ran over to where everyone was swimming. I wouldn't have minded going with him, but I couldn't help keeping mine. Eyes on the door, waiting for Noah to return from her stupid date. That was when I saw her come in with Jenna. Their arms were locked, and Noah smiled when she saw me. She was radiant when she smiled that way, and I wanted to grab her and kiss that dimple that had appeared in her left cheek. Happy birthday again, she shouted. Jenna observed us for a moment, before turning to the lake, where Lion was shouting for her to come in. What about you guys, he asked, and Noah looked down at her black dress. I didn't bring a swimsuit, she said, shrugging. Don't be a prude. Just wear your underwear. It's the same thing, Jenna said, dragging her off. Just imagining her in her underwear made me nervous, not to mention the idea of her stripping in front of all those drunk assholes at my party. I could tell she was uncomfortable. No way, I said, pulling her back toward me until she almost fell into my side. Damn, Nicholas, she complained. But then she smiled back at Jenna. I'm not in the mood. You go, though, and we'll see each other afterward. Jenna took off. I couldn't help but smile. Jenna was crazy, but I cared about her too. Much to be mad at her for trying to convince Noah to strip in front of God. And everyone else. I looked down at those freckles I could barely see in the shadows. Enjoy your date. I asked, unable to suppress my sarcasm. It was great, but who cares? I brought you a present. I leaned against the railing and looked at her, at those lips I wished I could bite and a good mood immediately overtook me. For real? I asked, wanting to know what was lurking under that. Cheerfulness, so unlike Noah's usual attitude. I'm scared to ask. Her expression changed. Was she getting nervous? Now I was even more 
curious. It's dumb, but with everything that's happened, and especially with last. Night, here. I bought it in a little shop. It was just a spare of the moment. Thing, but it's my way of saying sorry. Saying sorry? I grabbed the box and tore off the cream-colored wrapping. It was a tiny. Black Ferrari, exactly like mine. There's a note, she said, pointing to the car's chassis. In teeny letters, I read. I'm sorry about your car, for real. Someday, I'll buy you a new one. Happy birthday. Noah. It was so silly, I couldn't help but laugh. Standing there next to me, she. Did the same. I did owe you one, right, she said. I ought to throw you in the lake for this, I threatened, picking her up. And swinging her around. No, Nick, she screamed. I'm sorry, I swear. You're sorry. I said, lowering her slowly and squeezing her tightly. Just as I'd wanted to do ever since she'd left with Mario. I looked around. There was nobody there. Everyone was either in the lake or inside the house. I pushed her over to a tree and trapped her with my body. You could have caused me big, big problems. Luckily I've been wanting to kiss you ever since you walked through my front door. I remembered then what Lion had told me, Noah wasn't like the others. I rested a hand on her cheek and caressed those freckles I like so much. Her skin was tense, alabaster, and it was impossible not to lean down and kiss it, feel its smooth texture on my lips. I kissed her cheek, then the place where her dimple showed up when she smiled, then her throat, coming in, close and savoring her sweet skin. She moaned almost inaudibly, and I couldn't take it anymore. Our lips joined, and a thousand different feelings took hold of me, uncertainty, heat, a deep, dark desire. Between my body and the tree, I felt her melting into me. Her tongue looked for mine, and when they met, I almost died from pleasure. She pulled me down, and I couldn't control my hands, which went crazy feeling her all over. My hands climbed her thighs and touched the fringe of her panties. My God, I wanted to touch her there, make her shout with pleasure, hear her say. My name over and over. Nick, she panted. Tell me to stop and I will, I said, looking her in those eyes that seemed to have come up from hell to torture me and drive me insane. She said nothing, so I kept going. My fingers pushed aside her underwear, and she groaned into my shoulder. She was shaking, and I held her up with one hand as I pleasured her with the other. I watched her the whole time, bewitched. A minute later, I had to cover her mouth with mine, I was worried. Someone would hear her. She was perfect, and I was falling in love like an idiot. 27. Noah. I was shaking so hard, shaking from pleasure, that I had to let him hold me up. I couldn't believe what had just happened, I hadn't seen it coming. And it had been so fast. I had been giving him his present and laughing, and all of a sudden, he had me pushed against a tree and his caresses had been making me tremble. I'd wanted to stop him. My God, I should have, but feeling those hands all over me. It had been incredible. You're precious, he whispered in my ear after kissing me to keep me from shouting and getting us both caught. I could still remember all the times Dan had tried to touch me that way. I'd immediately said no, and he hadn't even gotten close. Nick, though, I must have been losing my mind. I think we should go back, I said, adjusting my dress. Why did I feel so bad all the sudden? Hey, Nick said, grabbing my chin and making me look up. Are you? Okay. Yeah, it's just. 
I didn't see that coming, I said, trying not to look at him. We let ourselves lose control, or I let myself lose control, and I'm sorry about it. Go back to Anna or whoever. You don't have to stay here. With me. I was trying not to let him see how stirred up I was. I wanted him to hold me. Deep down I wanted him to stay with me. I wanted us to be in love or at least to know each other better. Nick was a total mystery to me, and I was to him, too. I couldn't let him know that a part of me wanted him to tell me he loved me or to take me somewhere we could really be alone instead of leaning against a tree at a party. You want me to go be with Anna, he asked, suddenly pissed. Maybe. He was mad I didn't want to keep going. Maybe he thought I wanted to do the same to him. But just thinking about sex with him in the middle of the woods made me sick. Yeah, go be with her, I said, looking down at my toes. You don't have to stay with me. I told you, this was a mistake, we're going too far, it's not. Right. Nicholas turned around and kicked a rock. I heard him curse under his breath. Then he turned around in fury, his eyes looking like ice. Fine, he said. He reached back with one arm and pulled off his shirt. Before I knew what he was doing, he turned around, pulled off his jeans, and taken off running for the lake. The people swimming there saw him and chanted his name. My good mood and my self-esteem sank like his body sinking into that cold water. For the next hour and a half, I avoided him as much as possible. I didn't want to see him, the mere thought of it made me nervous. When five in the morning struck and most of the people had gone, the only ones left were Anna, Lion, Jenna, Mike, who owned the place, someone named Sophie, a friend of Nick's named Sam, Nick, and me. We were in a living room full of big white sofas and armchairs, sitting in a circle. Sophie and Jenna were on one side of me, Sophie was a bleach blonde dummy. Mike was to my right. And Nicholas was next to him. I was glad because that meant I didn't have to look him in the face. He hadn't said a word to me since we'd been standing by the tree. Maybe he was mad, or maybe he was glad he could wash his hands of me. I felt an ache each time our eyes accidentally crossed and he looked away but part of me felt relieved. I'd rather he ignore me than have to talk about. What happened? Why don't we play that game we used to play when we were kids? Sophie said. Truth or dare? Jenna said, grinning. Grow up, Sof. No, come on, let's play, Mike said, looking mischievous. That put me on alert. I hated that game. I'd said dare one time, and they'd made me drink a glass of cooking oil. It was disgusting. Grab the bottle on the table there, Mike asked his friend. He placed the beer bottle in the center of the circle and spun it, and it pointed to Anna. Truth or dare, he asked. Nick shifted uneasily. Ah, truth, she said, glancing over at him. I looked down. If it hadn't been ridiculous, I'd have covered my ears to not hear them. What's the last time you hooked up with someone? Mike asked. For real? Anna smirked. I hated the way she looked over at me as she described. Sleeping with Nick. It was in the back seat of a car, she said, laughing. I'd have preferred. A bed, but you know. Why did it hurt me so much to hear that? Why did the simple thought of Nick's hands roving her body make me want to get up and pull her hair out? I spun the bottle myself. I didn't care if a story was over or not. I wasn't interested in the details. Shit, now the bottle was pointing at Nick. 
Truth or dare? I asked him, a little brusquely. Dare, obviously. I tried to think of something that would really irritate him, but before I... Could, Sophie butted in. Take off your shirt, she ordered him, and I huffed as I watched her. Devour him with her eyes. That's not an actual dare, I said. You should learn to be faster, little sister, Nick said, stripping it off. Ooh. The other girls in the room must have been as entranced by his physique as I was. He was still to die for, even with the bumps and bruises Ronnie and his guys had dealt out to him. Thanks for the view, Nick. My turn, Jenna said, reaching out and spinning the bottle. Damn it. I was up. I almost shivered wondering what she'd ask me. Truth or dare? Truth, I shrugged. Tell us the worst thing you've ever done in your life, Jenna said. She thought I was a good little girl who never did anything out of the ordinary. If only she knew. Seeing the mocking looks on everyone's faces, I felt the urge to open their eyes, but did I really want to tell them about the thing that had been eating me up inside since I was eleven? No. Honestly, I didn't. I stole a pack of gummy candy from a store in my town when I was nine. They caught me, and I tried to run off, and I ended up pulling down two shelves full of stuff. I was grounded for a month. I've never stolen. Anything since then, I said, remembering that day affectionately. The chase had been the most fun part. Everyone laughed. Some friend of Nick's whose name I'd forgotten had to spin the bottle. This time, he'd had his eye on me all night. To my great displeasure, it slowed down and came to a stop on me again. Truth or dare, he asked with a twisted smile. Dare, I decided, since I'd picked truth last time, but I had the feeling I might have made the wrong choice. Take off your dress, he said, and the blood rushed into my face. No. I couldn't do that. The lights were too bright, everyone would be able to see every inch of my body. Nicholas didn't seem to like the idea, either. All I wanted was for him to come up with something that would get me out of it. Can I change back? I asked. Anna, clearly amused, asked me whether I had some kind of hang-up about my body. It's just a game, she said. You can change, Nick grunted. Everyone protested, but there was no changing his mind, and they had to give in. Fine. Since you didn't want to go along the first time, your dare is going to be a little more complicated, Anna said. I could tell she was enjoying making me suffer. I had the urge to get up and smack her in the head with the bottle. Triumphantly, she continued, so you've got to go into that closet and make out with Sam. What the hell? No way I was getting in some dark closet. This night was going from bad to worse. Great. Sam said. I'll do it, I said, but here. I'm not getting in any closet. Why? Anna asked. She's afraid of the dark, Nicholas said. I couldn't believe he'd just blurted that out without any consideration for me. Everyone cracked up. What are you, like? Four years old. Sophie said. I could feel myself blushing. That subject was off limits. Only a few. People knew the truth about that fear. I hadn't even told my stepbrother the reason behind it. Same difference as far as I'm concerned. I'm going to need that kiss. Though, Sam said, edging over to me with no sense of shame. Whatever, it was just a kiss. Why should I care? I stood up, ignoring everyone around. Me. Sam was blonde with brown eyes. Jenna had told me he went to our 
school. When he reached me, he put a hand around my waist. Everyone else was jeering. I'm sure they could tell I was embarrassed, but my only thought was getting it over with. I'd meant to just give him a quick peck, but he was too quick for me, and he forced my lips open and slipped his tongue inside. I froze, and a second. Later, I shoved him away. That'll do, I said and sat back down. I was angry, even if I didn't exactly know why. You kiss like an angel, Noah, Sam said, returning to his place. Nick got up. He seemed worried, as if he had something on his mind. And both his hands were clenched into fists. It's late, he said, looking at me. We need to go. This game's stupid. Anyway. I got up, and the rest followed suit. Everyone was tired, the party had. Dragged on too long. Nick threw on his t-shirt, and Sophie observed him. With what seemed like sadness. We said goodbye and walked to our cars. Thank God Anna had come in. Her convertible and we didn't have to take her home. Jenna promised to call. Me the next day so we could plan what we were packing together. I was a bit distant, that trip seemed like the least appropriate idea ever. Nick said goodbye to Anna, and we hopped in the car and took off. I didn't want to talk about what had happened, so I turned on the radio. As soon as we were on the road, though, he reached out and turned it off. I didn't like you kissing Sam one fucking bit, he said, drumming his fingers nervously on the wheel. It was just a dumb game. What was I supposed to do? I said, remembering Anna's confession. I didn't care to hear that, either. You should have said no. I already said no once. I don't ask you to explain what you're doing or not doing with Anna or the hundreds of chicks you rub up on right in front of my face, I said, raising my voice. I haven't done that, he said and I raised my eyes. Hundreds of girls is. Too many, even for me, freckles. What about Anna, though? My thing with Anna. It's different, but if it makes you feel better, it's. Been weeks since we've done anything, he responded. I could tell he was. Trying to keep calm. Well, I don't believe you, but even if it is true, you don't owe me any explanation. I'm not jealous. I crossed my arms and looked outside into the darkness. Of course I was, but I would never admit that aloud. I am, he said, turning to look at me. I'm jealous, I'm super jealous. And I don't even know why. I've never been jealous of anyone in my life. Noah, and certainly not of some jerk-off like Sam. I was confused. You shouldn't feel that way over a dumb game. You think I don't know that, he interrupted me. Just then, we arrived home. Nick opened the car door in silence. Before I could get out, he grabbed my wrist, and I looked over at him. I'm sorry what happened in the woods wasn't what you expected. I didn't want to scare you or make you uncomfortable. I felt the wall I'd built up around myself start to crumble. You gave me the option to stop you, Nick, and I didn't, I replied. And I felt his hand stroke my wrist. I'd do it all with you, Noah, you know that, but I won't do anything. Until the fear disappears from your eyes. Damn it. He got out. It took a long time before my heart felt normal again. The next day, Jenna picked me up at 3 in the afternoon to go shopping. According to her, this trip to the Bahamas was the perfect excuse to spruce up our wardrobes. My mother, overjoyed that Nicholas had invited me along, gave me her credit card and begged me to buy something. It was weird to see my mother so happy just because her stepson and I were getting along, especially since from her point of view the whole farce was 
just him trying to treat me as his sister. I couldn't even imagine the look on. Her and Will's faces if they found out what we'd been doing the past few. Weeks. Still wavering about whether I should even go on the trip, I waited for. Jenna as she walked in and out of the dressing room with a thousand. Different designer outfits. She was so thin, so svelte. I was envious. Her. Huh. Dark skin looked beautiful in every single thing she tried on. I still hadn't. Picked anything, and I wasn't even particularly into the idea. I already had. Way too many clothes I hadn't even worn. My phone rang, and I grabbed it out of my back pocket. Hello. I said. No answer. I looked at the screen. Unknown number. Hello. I said again, louder. I could hear someone breathing on the other. Line, and my whole body shivered. I hung up just as Jenna walked out of the dressing room again. Who was it, she asked as I slipped my phone back in my pocket. Dunno. Unknown number, I said, picking up my bag and heading for the door. Weird. I got this call from an unknown number once, and it turned out to be this weirdo who was obsessed with me. He called me, like, a million times. I had to change my number and everything. Lion was losing his mind. Honestly, though, who was going to stalk me? But then I remembered. Nick telling me about Ronnie's threats and how I needed to take them more. Seriously. I wasn't going to let a stupid phone call freak me out, though. I pushed my worries aside and walked with Jenna to the register. Ten minutes later, we were sitting at a table outside a Starbucks, where I picked apart a blueberry muffin while she drank a strawberry frappuccino. Can I ask you something, she asked. I nodded, putting a piece of muffin into my mouth. Do you have feelings for Nick? I almost choked. I didn't see that coming. Was it so obvious? I tried to swallow and stop coughing taking a sip of my OJ and asking myself how the hell I was going to respond. Why do you ask? Yesterday at the birthday party. I don't know. I thought I saw something. Like Nick. He's never been so happy to see someone, but when you showed up, he was like a completely different guy. I could be imagining things, but your reaction when Anna talked and then his when. You kissed Sam, they were almost exactly the same. Hum. Nothing got past her. It was true we'd let ourselves go that night. Not stopping to think that people around us might pick up on what was happening between us. But then what was happening between us? Jenna, he's my stepbrother, I said, trying to change the subject. She rolled her eyes. Yeah, which means he's not your real brother or anything like it, so you can cut the bullshit, she said. I know Nick, and he's changed. There's something there. Maybe it's true you're trying to be friends now, or maybe you actually have feelings for him. I felt as if I were being placed behind an x-ray machine. What were my feelings for Nick? I certainly felt something, I had to admit that, at least to myself, but what was it exactly? I had no idea, I only knew that he was managing to drive me completely insane. We're trying to be friends for our parents' sake, I said, knowing it was a lie. And I don't dislike him, especially now that we're actually trying to get to know each other. Jenna sucked on her straw. Fine. But don't tell me it wouldn't be. Amazing if you're hooked up. That doesn't count as incest, does it? Once again, I found myself choking on my muffin.